This is 2A part 4, where we're now going to start looking at how to find out which column number we need to be in for our VLOOKUP to find out what the APR is going to be. Now there's two different ways that I've created tutorials for you to look at this. One is going to be a nested if, and this one is going to be looking at each of the criteria in turn and then saying that if those criteria have been met, then it's going to put in here the column number. Now we do that using an if statement column and and to combine all of our conditions. So we'll start with if, and then we're going to put and, and then we put all of our conditions within this and statement. So we'll start off, the first one is a driving license type has to be full. So DL type, equals now it's not the word full because it's the option buttons and it's the first of the option buttons so it's got to be equal to one second thing is going to be whether the employment risk not the employment status but the employment risk is equal to good next we want it to be a guarantor so i'm just going to type in the word guarantor i don't need to put equals true because it's either true or false just as it is and finally, our credit rating in for the first column needs to be greater than or equal to three. Now if I close off the AND, so that's that finished, I now need to say, right, what's gonna happen if that's true? So if that's true, I want it to display the column number three. If it's not true, I want it to display the column number zero. And you'll see why zero is important later. Now it's coming up to zero at the moment. Let's try and make that go to three. So we'll go for good, credit rating above 4.5, a full driving license and a guarantor. Now let's have a look at our table. That has now gone to three because we've met all of those criteria. Now what we need to do is we need to keep moving along the table doing exactly the same thing. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this and we're going to have a look at what needs to be different. Well, this time we don't want a guarantor. Okay, so I'm going to say not guarantor. And if it is true, I want it to display the number four. So let's go back to our APR calculator, click on guarantor. There we go, number four is now being displayed. So let's copy and paste that again. Now, we, the guarantor is irrelevant now, so we'll take out the guarantor from the equation altogether. And we've now still got full and good, but this time, instead of being greater than or equal to three, the credit rating needs to be less than three. So let's see what happens if I change my credit rating to be less than three. There we go, you can see that it's gone to four. Now, that shouldn't be four, it should be five, and it's because when we did our copy and paste, we forgot to change that to five. This is why it's good to test things as you go along. Finally, we're just looking at full and risky, and guarantor and credit rating don't come into the equation. So, we change this for the employment risk to be risky. The credit rating is taken out of the equation and what we want is to say that if both of those conditions are true we want column six. So now what we've got to do is change our employment status to something like casual so that goes risky. Let's just move these up just to show that they don't actually matter. Now we go it's showing number six. Okay, so now let's have a look at the last one because we've got risky, so we'll stick with risky. And this time, instead of our driving license type being one, we want it to be two for provisional because we're looking in the provisional section. And instead of it being six, we're gonna go for nine. So we've got employment, risky, driving license type and two, which is provisional. So let's now change our driving license type to provisional. And see what happens. There we go, that's now changed to nine. Now, before we do the other two, you might be wondering, right, why are all these zero? 
Well, I need to find out what column number it is that we're going to use. So I'm just going to do a sum of all of these, and that will be the column number that we'll use. I can then name that column number, and I'll be able to refer to that in my VLOOKUP because I've now worked, found out what the column number is actually going to be. Right, let's move on to these other ones. We've got provisional, good, greater than 4.5. So I think I'll go with this one to copy. I'm going to change that to 7 first of all. Our credit rating has got to be greater than or equal to 4.5. We're still on a risk of good but our driving license type is provisional, which is number two. Let's see if we can get that to work. So we'll change this to be a good employment type. Leave that as 4.6. There we go, that is greater than 4.5, so that's come up as number seven. And that has changed to number seven, which is what we want to happen. So finally, we've got this one. And the difference here is that it's less than 4.5 instead of an greater than or equal to. So less than 4.5, and we'll go for column number 8. If we press enter, we can see it's seal number 7. Let's change it to less than 4.5. There we go. Go back to there, and it's 8. And just to show that the guarantor doesn't matter, let's untick guarantor. You can still, still see that it's number 8. So just to summarise, what this is doing is just saying if... And, now and means all these conditions have to be met for it to be true. So if all those conditions are true, then it displays number 8, which is going to be the column number in this case. Otherwise, it's going to display 0. And then we add them together and it will just find the 1, because n none of these are ever going to be um, allocated at the same time. These conditions can only exist once, and that is why we went through this colouring process uh, and removing the n's to make it a little bit easier to understand. What you'll now be able to move on to is the fifth video tutorial, which will be about looking up the value for the APR based upon the row, which you'll have for age, and the column number, which you get from here. But if you want to try the nested if option, instead of all of these separate ifs, then you can have a look at the fourth video tutorial for this section.